Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. Today we're going to be talking about some spring cleaning, but not in the way that you might consider. We're going to be talking today about cleaning the liver and what that can actually do for a person's health. On our program today is a consultant to the Australian Health and Advisory Service and has regularly appeared in national TV shows and is developing her own series of health DVDs. She also writes for national health magazines and is a much sought-after public speaker on nutritional medicine and hormonal disorders. Today we're going to be talking about her book, The Liver Cleansing Diet, a life-saving breakthrough which includes healing strategies for things such as hepatitis C and B and help for people such as children and the rest of us who are overweight. I'd like to welcome to our program today, Dr. Sandra Cabot. Dr. Cabot, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. Oh, it's a pleasure, Daniel. It's great to be on your show. Well, thank you. Now, it's really quite fascinating what you have here because one of the things when it comes to the word obesity in America is that we tend to find ways to cut calories, to exercise, diet pills, you name it. And what you're suggesting here is this is something that doesn't really seem to be talked about very much, and that could be that your liver just isn't functioning well. That's right. Um, For example, if uh, someone goes on a diet with a group of other people and uh, that particular someone can only lose, say, 10 pounds and everyone else loses 30 or 40, you've got to think about the liver. Um, They've probably got a fatty liver or they may be taking... uh, too many prescribed medications that are overloading the liver and taking the energy reserves from the liver. And that means there's less energy left in the liver to burn fat. So a healthy liver regulates fat metabolism and it keeps your good cholesterol high and your bad cholesterol low and it can pump excessive fat out of your body through the bile. So, you know, the liver is very important for fat metabolism And also it um, activates the thyroid hormone. So people who have a liver problem, they will find it much harder to lose weight for all those reasons. That's, it's like I said, it's just fascinating to even think about this because it isn't something that I've heard very at all hardly here in the United States. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, um, in my practice, uh, in my medical practice, I see... Um, a lot of new patients and sometimes they're on six or seven different prescribed medications like they may be on a drug to lower cholesterol, a drug to lower blood sugar, an anti-inflammatory drug, an antidepressant, Uh, they may be on an antihypertensive, a diuretic and nobody knows the long-term effect of the interaction of all those drugs on the liver. Mm -hmm. Remember the liver has to break the drugs down. The studies haven't been done. And I find that a lot of people who are over-medicated will put on weight just for that reason. They haven't changed their diet. Um, but they've just got um, an over-medication problem and the liver energy is being used to metabolize all the drugs and there's less energy left in the liver to burn fat. And then the other thing, um, if they have a fatty liver, well, their liver is storing fat instead of burning fat, mm-hmm. then they'll find it very difficult to lose weight unless they first improve their liver function by taking a good liver formula and by eating some foods that are specifically good for the liver, you know, to help the liver break down the fat and to help the liver detox their body to to detox the liver itself, you know, because a fatty liver is quite toxic. Most of the toxins in our environment um, are either plastics or they're insecticides, pesticides, they are fat-soluble, and once they get into the fatty tissue, they stay there. And it's only the liver that can turn them into water-soluble substances, which can then be eliminated from your body through watery fluids like the bile, the urine, and the sweat. It's only your liver that can do that, and if it doesn't do it, you will remain quite toxic. So, you know, there's many reasons to work on your liver first, and then the weight loss becomes much easier. And also, you know, your body detoxes naturally and, uh, of course, your immune system improves, Daniel. And and I often say to my patients, look, what is your greatest health asset in this life? Your greatest health asset is your immune system. It protects you against infections, cancer and inflammation, which is the cause of all the 
you know, the degenerative diseases of today that people um, often die prematurely with or impair their quality of life or give them a, a bad old age. So what a, we need to look after our immune system. Our immune system is there to protect us. But if we don't look after the immune system, it can't protect us. And what I've found over more than 30 years of research into the liver is that the liver protects your immune system, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a filter, a mechanical filter. It removes all the toxins and the dead cells and microorganisms and even cancer cells from your blood. So it keeps your blood a lot cleaner, a lot purer, and therefore your immune system doesn't have to work as hard. So we have to see the relationship of our liver to our immune system and our blood vessels, our circulation. And that's why, uh, you know, the liver is such a strategic organ. And, of course, the Chinese have known about this for thousands of years and they call the liver the general of the army of the body. Nothing like having a general taking care of the troops, huh? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and if the general was like, you know, turned to fat, well... Hey, you got a you got a white liver. You got a lily liver. <laughs> you know you, the battle's lost. Mm -hmm. mm. Now here's an interesting thing. Uh, one of the things, especially in America, that's been rampant is one out of three people are getting type two diabetes. And yeah. what's really interesting is on our program we have talked uh, over the last seven years about diabetes off and on and. And that there are ways that you can reverse it and get off of insulin and medication and the like. And you say the same thing here, just simply by cleansing the diet, that, yeah, you can certainly reverse the symptoms of diabetes that cause, you know, the problems that you have. What's interesting is when I tell people about this, they stand there and they're like, no, there's no way you can do that. And I'm like, are you kidding? With all the information that's out there, people that are actually doing this, and they just don't seem to believe that this is one of those things that can be reversed. Well, you see, people think it's hard. If they think, oh, this is going to be really hard, I can't achieve this. Mm -hmm. but actually, it's not. Uh, we've got a book on uh, reversing diabetes, type 2. I mean, if you've got a young person who's a diabetic type 1, it's different. That's an autoimmune disease. You mm -hmm. can't reverse it. But the majority of people with diabetes have type 2, which is associated with high insulin, insulin resistance and fatty liver. Now remember your liver has a lot to do with blood sugar control. So if you have a healthy liver it can actually store sugar in the form of glycogen. So when your blood sugar levels drop your liver releases glucose from the glycogen and that maintains your blood sugar level. Now if your liver is full of fat it's not storing the glycogen. So you're going to have a major problems with your blood sugar. So uh, what people need to do is improve their liver function and we've got a very good formula called liver tone plus and that has been studied in the clinical trial to be able to help um, support liver function so that the liver can burn more fat and reverse fatty liver and then also you need to reduce the amount of grains that you're eating a lot of people uh, with diabetes type 2 are very resistant to gluten and, and if they eat gluten in the form of wheat and oats and barley and rye, that will destabilize their blood sugar. So they need to eat more protein. And the liver can actually turn protein into glucose, um, particularly if you're eating um, a lot of plant food. So we need to get people eating more salads and, uh, you know, all different types of vegetables. Um, we don't exclude any vegetables. Um, and some fruit is all right, but you want more vegetables than fruit. And we need people to be eating regular protein. See, protein has no effect on your blood sugar. Mm. You can have one egg or three eggs. It's not going to make any difference to your blood sugar. It won't make any difference to your weight. Mm. So people think, oh, that doesn't make sense because that's to do with physiology. And if you understand the biochemistry and the physiology of... Uh, blood sugar control, then it does make sense. It's all based on science. But people have been brainwashed for years. Mm -hmm. They've been told, don't eat fat. You know, don't eat eggs, don't eat cheese. Um, and, and you've got to have your cereals and, and your muffins and your donuts and, all, and you know, your carbohydrates. But you don't. <laughs> That's the last thing you want. Mm -hmm. If you're a diabetic, you don't want 
carbohydrate from grains. You don't want sugar. What you want is protein and you want more raw food and you can have cooked vegetables as well and you need to take a good liver formula. Uh, the other thing that can help a lot is magnesium. That's a mineral that all diabetics are deficient in. I call magnesium the miracle mineral. Mm. Um, I've got a book on it. The magnesium, the miracle mineral, you won't believe the difference it makes to your health and your sex life. Um, so you know, a lot of men have told me what a tremendous difference magnesium made to their sex life. Uh, I didn't know that, you know, and to, that's what the patients tell you. You get a lot of feedback wow. from patients. Now, I've been a medical doctor for 35 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've seen all the, the possible trends come and go. But the one thing that always holds true is nutritional medicine. It works. And people think, oh, this is going to be really hard. It's not. It's easy. And you don't have to give up the things you love. You don't have to give up having a beer or a wine. You don't have to give up um, having coffee. You don't have to give up having some chocolate. Um, you know, if you have the dark chocolate, it's really quite healthy and, and you can have small amounts of regular chocolate. But what people need to do is understand how to improve their liver function and then everything becomes a lot easier. Uh -huh. You see, so when you tell people, oh, you can reverse diabetes type 2, they think, oh, well, maybe you can, but it's impossible for me because it's too hard. Mm -hmm. But it's actually not. It's the, the fact that people are not realizing that their liver is the problem. And if they can um, use things that will help their liver function, then the, the natural healing process starts without them having to go on a, a strict diet. Yeah, it's just fascinating because as I was reading uh, through your book, The Liver Cleansing Diet, <clears throat> is one of the things you brought up is that you have these people that are in your profession trying to downplay it or dismiss it. Yeah. <clears throat> and one of the things that you said in there is they say, you know, well, there's no real science behind it. And what's funny about that is uh, about two, about a year ago, we had uh, Suzanne Summers on our program who's talking about her book, Breakthrough, which is about, you know, preventing cancer and how you can treat cancer with alternative therapies. And she was brought on to a national talk show and uh, brought in two of the doctors featured in her book. And then two were brought by the network to basically refute anything that these people had to say. And, you know, she jumped in after these guys were just banging away at them and saying, you know, in 50 years and all the millions of dollars that you've raised in cancer research, you guys aren't any further along now than you were then. And I said, you know, what's even more fascinating is we get caught up in the idea that science is that thing that's sort of like the gold seal of approval on yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, what's being overlooked is why aren't they talking about the results you're getting? Isn't that what is at issue here, the results? And that's exactly the way you go in your book. It's like, hey, you can throw all the science you want to at it, but the point is it's the results that we're looking for. Isn't that what we should be interested in? Yeah. Well, actually, nutritional medicine is very scientific mm -hmm. because it treats a cause of disease. And, I mean, a lot of the drugs out there that have been subjected to the so-called gold standard, double-blind, prospective, crossover, placebo-controlled trials have been found to be very toxic and they've had to be withdrawn in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the so-called um, drug-orientated model of research is not perfect. No form of research is perfect. Mm -hmm. so there's too many variables. But what I think that the drug companies have tried to minimise over the years is clinical research, which is where, you know, physicians out there who are at the coalface of helping people, they're actually... Uh, documenting their results and they've got a patient you know who's got pathology they've got a fatty liver they've got abnormal liver function tests uh, they've got abnormal immune function and then 12 months later all that's been reversed and you can see it um, objectively you can see the scan is now normal the blood tests are now normal and the patient feels better so you know to me that is very good research uh, but you'll find that the detractors of clinical research will say, no, it wasn't placebo controlled. It doesn't need to be. You've actually <laughs> helped the patient. You know, I mean, in, in clinical research, you, who's going to fund seeing somebody and giving them a sugar pill? Right. Yeah. So it, it's a bit of a conspiracy theory to intimidate people, I think. 
Um, and if, if people really look uh, at the at the data out there and the research, there's a lot of research. For example, you can you can go and do you can research the mineral, just one mineral, selenium, for a month, and you'll find there's a lot of studies out there. They may be population studies, what we call epidemiological, um, and so what? You know, they're looking at thousands of people, and they will show you categorically that if people live in areas where the soils are low in selenium, they have a much higher rate of cancer. Viral infections are far more dangerous. And then there's other studies that show the effect of supplementation with selenium in people with the AIDS virus. They do much better. I mean, we're talking about the most deadly virus in the world. Mm -hmm. But the, that research doesn't really get heavily promoted because you can't patent a natural substance. So, you know, medicine's all about politics. And people really need to educate themselves sometimes. Um, really, um, you need to be cautious and you need to understand that nutritional medicine is very safe and very powerful. And, you know, I've written over 20 books on holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. I've got three books on the liver, the liver cleansing diet, which is translated into eight languages. I've got the Healthy Liver and Bowel book. I've got the book Fatty Liver, You Can Reverse It. I've got books on thyroid. I've got books on weight loss, cholesterol. And if people educate themselves, they can have much better results. Um, and they will also see that it's not hard. It, there's simple things you can do that will add many, many years to your life and will help to prevent degenerative diseases of our time like cancer and heart disease and dementia. You know, we have a huge problem with dementia. Um, in Australia alone, every week there's a 1,000 new people diagnosed. Wow. Yeah, so here there's like... There's going to be 10,000 new people a week, at least, mm -hmm. diagnosed with dementia. And a lot of this is due to the fact that we haven't looked after our immune system and we haven't looked after our liver. So, uh, you know, I've got a book on uh, Alzheimer's, What You Must Know to Protect Your Brain. And, you know, people really need to understand that their health needs nurturing. <laughs> and you really need to look after it. It doesn't have to cost you a fortune. Uh, you know, there are certain things that you need to eat and certain things that you don't want to be deficient in, like omega-3, uh, selenium, iodine, magnesium, that you may have to supplement with. Um, and if you have a fatty liver, take the Livertone Plus. Uh, and, you know, try and uh, exercise, uh, get plenty of rest, try not to stress too much. Stress can cause cancer. So, you know, people need to go, okay, well, I need to nurture my health my health is my greatest asset. Uh, there's plenty of rich corpses in the cemetery. You know, it didn't do them any good, their money. People forget that their health is fragile. And they forget that at the end of the day, what matters? Your health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, in your book, you outline 12 steps people can take, even if they don't, you know, decide to follow completely the diet, that if they take these 12 steps that they will see improved liver function. If you could briefly go over each of those steps for our listeners. Yeah. Well, very simple. Eat more raw food. At least 30% of your diet should be raw vegetables and fruits. That's a minimum, 30%. Um, drink plenty of water or herbal teas. Um, you can also drink coffee. That's fine, but coffee is not the same as water. So you need to be well hydrated. Make sure that you eat the healthy fat. So um, oily fish, and you can take liquid fish oil. I prefer to, to get the bottled fish oil um, and keep it in the fridge and have it just before you eat. Uh, walnuts, flax seeds, and chia seeds are good sources of omega-3. Um, make sure you get enough vitamin C, so from raw food and citrus. Um, take a good liver formula if you're overweight or fatty liver or if you're exposed to toxic chemicals or a lot of viral infections, so um, the Liver Tone Plus has been formulated to protect your liver and to support liver function. 
Um, also, make sure you eat regular protein to stabilize your blood sugar. So good sources of protein would be eggs, um, unprocessed cheese, uh, seafood, um, poultry. You don't have to be vegan. If you want to eat uh, lamb or veal, that's fine. Um, but, you know, don't eat preserved meat. Preserved meats are bad, like the delicatessen meats. They've got a lot of preservatives and they're high in bacteria. So it has to be fresh. Um, probably have a few days where you don't eat any animal protein. That's good. You know, just maybe have some... We could have cheese and salads and vegetables and nuts, seeds. Sprouting seeds is very good. Uh, that increases the protein content. Um, make sure you're not low in vitamin D. Make sure you're not low in iodine. Uh, so you get uh, iodized salt or you can uh, use a formula that contains iodine. Iodine is very important for your immune system. It reduces cancer. Um, make sure you're not low in selenium. Selenium is the most important mineral for your liver. And we have selenium in the Liver Tone Plus formula. And the selenium reduces liver cancer. It reduces um, all types of cancer, actually. It reduces the ability of viruses to replicate in your body. It helps your liver to make glutathione, which is the most powerful antioxidant in your body, the most pro powerful protective antioxidant, glutathione. And glutathione cannot work properly without selenium. And blood tests for selenium are really quite useless. The most... Uh, practical way to check someone's selenium status is by analyzing their toenail clippings. But that's actually quite expensive. So, you know, just assume that uh, you need to take some selenium. Brazil nuts are a good source of selenium. But in any um, immune disorder or liver disorder, I always use supplemental selenium. And um, that they're the essentials. So they're pretty basic, aren't they? Pretty simple, pretty yeah. achievable. <clears throat> Well, just the water one alone, I mean, that's something you don't see people really, you know, uh, there was a friend of, of ours who actually was involved in hydrotherapy or colon hydrotherapy, if you will, and he says, you'd be amazed how many people walking around so, you know, underhydrated, it would just blow your mind. He said yeah. there was one time that he was actually working with a lady where she was five gallons underhydrated. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, Jesus, Somebody had to be blowing away in the wind like that, but well, that, that can that are... can cause a stroke. You know, if you're dehydrated. <laughs> exactly. mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I was going to ask one thing because you were talking about water and then vitamin C is one of those things. What I like to do, and I drink water pretty much all day long. You know, not you know a bunch of cups, you know, in an hour or whatever, but just all day long. It's usually pretty much all I drink. Yeah. And I like to squeeze lemon into it. I'll usually squeeze, you know, three or four slices into it and drink it just because I like the taste of it. But yeah. that'd be a good way to do it too, wouldn't it? Excellent. Well, in the liver cleansing diet, uh, we have like every morning you get up and you squeeze a lemon into fresh water. And then if you've got time, you can also make a vegetable juice. And if you're really busy, you can make a whole week's supply. And as soon as you've made it, freeze it in glass jars. You only need about eight ounces a day. So, you know, you can do that as well to hydrate and to boost your antioxidants. And uh, some of our liver tonics are in powder form, so you can stir that into um, a juice. So, you know, hydration is very important. And over the years, I've seen a lot of people have uh, strokes because they were dehydrated. Remember, if you're not drinking enough, your blood will become thicker and therefore mm -hmm. sticky, and you're more likely to have a stroke caused by a blood clot. Mm -hmm and then that can cause permanent neurological damage. Ugh. So you have no idea how important it is to stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. water is certainly something that we can't live without besides oxygen. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people do, as you say. They, you know, they drink coffee and they, or they drink uh, soft drinks, which are full of sugar, which is dehydrating. And, uh, you know, they might have one glass of water a day. Well, man, they are what I would say very... Uh, adventurous people, you know, because you never know when uh, the axe is going to fall. You know, you, you've got to stay hydrated. Now, Dr. Cabot, if you can, can you give our listeners a website where they can find about 
more out about you and, and yeah. what they can do to improve their health. Because, you know, there are so many things we can touch on in this book, you know, such as, you know, the symptoms of a liver that's malfunctioning, you know. But what I wanted to kind of touch on is this is a book that actually talks about what all of that is. And yeah. fascinating read here with a lot of great recipes in there, too, for people yeah. who want to improve their health. But a website, if you could. Yeah, well, our website is liverdoctor.com. And it's got a lot of uh, free newsletters on there that are archived. It's called the Liverish Newsletter, the newsletters. Um, so there's a lot of good information there, and you can email us. We have a health advisory service. We give free help, and the phone number's there. You can call our naturopath. Um, we do research in liver problems, so we love to hear from anyone with liver problems. But, you know, if, if you don't know you've got a liver problem, you're just not healthy, well, give us a call. We're happy to help. And... Our website, again, is liverdoctor.com, so L-I-V-E-R-D-O-C-T-O-R.com. The Liver Cleansing Diet is the book, and our guest, Dr. Sandra Cabot. Thank you for joining us here on the program. I'd like to revisit this and maybe go in more depth next time about symptoms and, and ways and you know recipes and things that we can do to actually make our health a lot healthier. Yeah. Great, Daniel. Thank you for being on the program today. That's a pleasure. And again, for you folks out there, if you missed it, the website is www.liverdoctor.com. Our guest today, Dr. Sandra Cabot. We also encourage you to visit us at our website, which is beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. Sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter as well as visit us at our blog where we archive our segments just like this one for you to listen to at your convenience and share with others as well. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 Radio Program. Remember, live your day past 